ABRSM stands for the Associated Board of Royal Schools of Music. This examination is based in London, and this examination has been founded in 1886. So it's a very damn old examination. So one of the requirements of the ABRSM exam, normal examination, is that you have to have three pieces prepared in the requirements. Scales are pictures, sight reading, and the oral examination. For singing exams, you have to prepare three pieces and no scales are pictures, but a traditional song and an unaccompanied traditional song. This ABRSM examination is internationally well known. When you are preparing for the ABRSM examination, internationally, there are people from London, professors, actually professors from London, who travels out of London and basically assess every single ABRSM student internationally. So they basically come to that country to do the examination. That's how well structured this examination is. However, because of the coronavirus pandemic, we can't do any of that. <sighs> yeah. So in this case, it was a secondary option, which was basically doing a video recording exam instead of the normal examination. The difference? There is no skills or features, there is no sight reading, there is no oral exam. Only three pieces plus an own choice. So in general, you are preparing four pieces of music. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to prepare for the ABRS remotely assessed examination and also what kind of comments and criteria you'll be getting when you complete this examination. Do you see? you see these books? You know what this is? You know what this is? These are all the pieces of the ABRSM exams. Holy shit, this is back from 2005. In a normal examination, we have basically structured in this kind of a content. Bam. For performances, we only get to play three pieces and you have sight reading, scales or pitches, and oral exam. But if we're removing all of that, because this is a recording exam, you have to play one extra piece. And for that one extra piece, we call that OC. Stands for own choice. So you can choose whatever you want with that OC piece. According to our experience, it's best to pick something that is in that grade. For example, if you're doing examination with the 2021 and 2022 syllabus, you already picked three pieces from that syllabus, but you can pick an extra piece from a previous syllabus or really old syllabus, like from 2005, 2004, 2003, 2002, or 1991. Whatever it is from the past, it's gonna be perfect for the recital. For example, As you can see, there's so many examples that you can possibly do. It doesn't matter what grade you pick, it depends because they always judge about the quality of your performance. That's the ABRSM examination. They don't care about the quantity of your performance, they care about the quality of your performance. After you design your repertoire, that's when you start writing this program down. They call it the photography identification, but I would like to call it the title card because it sounds so sexy in that kind of a name. So I just call it title card. Mm -hmm. In this examination, they require you to play all four pieces all in one take. So no edits, no cuts, no chopping between pieces and just play from the beginning to the end chronologically, chronologically with all the pieces that they have written in their title card. So, this is how the exam goes. They pick up the title card and it shows it to the camera for 5 seconds. I mean, a lot of people ask me like, Hey, do you say what your name is and what the piece you're going to be playing before you show the title card? And I'm like, what's the point of wasting your time over that? What's the point of wasting your energy over that? You wouldn't want to see people say, Yo fam, my name is Joshua Wong Parker, and I am here to do a grade 8 piano exam. My list A I have chose is Johann Sebastian Bach, Fantasia in C. E minor B W V nine oh six list B Johannes Brahms Intermezzo in E number six from Fantasies Opus one hundred and sixteen list to C B to school for snow more than flowers from my pieces because I'm Australian B and my own choice is gonna be Rachmaninoff Concerto number Rachmaninoff Concerto number three. You seriously asking me to play Rachmaninoff Concerto number three for grade eight piano exam? Are you serious? No, please tell me this is a joke. You have to hold this title card to the camera for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. After you show your title card, that's when you have to show the music score of your own choice. No, seriously, I'm not playing the record. I'm not showing the record. Just... 
This is my own choice. That's when you start playing from beginning to the end. So this examination sounds very easy, doesn't it? It sounds much more easy than the old exam. Pretty much you don't need sight readings, you don't need scales arpeggios, you don't need any oral exam. It's basically a dream come true. All you need to do is just play four pieces and you're done. Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> According to my experience as a teacher, I rather prefer live exams than video exams. It's seriously, when we first did our video exam, we thought it was going to be very easy too. Generally, this examination is more of a recital than just an ordinary examination. So do you expect young kids to be playing the instrument from beginning to the end, all four pieces, perfectly fine? When did you ever realize that you're going to be experiencing multiple takes, multiple replays, multiple do this again, oh I don't like this part, I want to play this piece again, oh I don't like that part, so I want to play this again. So this is the difference between a lower grade student and a higher grade student. For lower grade students, it's usually little kids who do these exams and they are sometimes very stubborn. So when they do the first take, maybe they, they were pretty much happy with it. And so the adults will be like, okay, this was good, but you need to do this again because there was a little bit of a mistake over there. There was a little bit of a mistake over here. And there's a bit, will you play that part with wrong finger number? Let's, let's, let's film this again. Let's, let's do this again. And that's when the kid starts crying because they don't want to do this again. Or some performers do perfectly in the first take. However, they made that one particular mistake in that one particular piece of music. And they're like, oh, I want to play this again. I want to do this exam one more time. Let me do the recording again. And then they had that full intention from the first take, but they don't have that same focus and same concentration as what they did from the first take. So in the second take, it's worse than the first take. Surprisingly, you make more mistakes in some random passages, you lose all your focus, all your musical attention is gone, everything is completely lost. So one of our students took, no joke, no joke, two months, two months to finish only recording for two months straight. I mean, yes, he, this student didn't come to our place every single day, but anyways, still, this student has been preparing so much for two months because this person wanted to be a perfectionist. So for this examination, it's a huge nightmare for kids who have a perfectionist personality or an obsessive compulsive disorder. In some aspects, it's much more easier than the recorded exam. I mean, yes, there is some preparation for you to do a lot more, like the scales are features. It sounds challenging, it sounds very stressful because one of you guys who finds this real difficult is either people who have failed a lot or people who have absolutely no idea what it is or people who have not even did the exam in the first place. So it's a good thing that you are scared of that examination. That's why these students naturally have this focus and this massive concentration because of the fear that they have. And then as soon as they get to the examination, they try to do their best. But for the recording exam, everyone has the mindset of, oh, this is recording exam, so we have a chance. No, you should not think of it that way. As soon as you think, I have a chance, then you're gonna make more mistakes than you usually do. You will lose all that tension, you lose all that fear, every single thing that you would do like how you did in live exams. Huge difference! So when they are prepared to do the recorded exam, that's when teachers and parents have to give them only one condition. One take. Maximum, two takes. Because sometimes the first and the second take is always in the best quality. In the criteria of the ABRSM music examination, pitch, time, tone, shape, and performance. And each pieces plus the performance as whole are 30 points each. So in total, 150 points. So the distinction mark is 27 to 30, merit is 24 to 26, pass is 20 to 23, and the rest of them is fail. In the distinction mark, they require you to play with a highly accurate note. So when you're playing a violin or a viola, cello, double bass, and you're making so much out of tune, or 
Yeah, you're definitely not gonna get a distinction. Time! Fluid with flexibility where appropriate rhythmic character well conveyed. So basically, I'll ask you to place with full understanding of the rhythm. For instance, if you're playing a waltz piece, you have to play like a waltz. Tone. Well projected, sensitive use of tonal qualities. Obviously, you care about the tone color or how do you shape the tone color, and that's when it comes to the shaping here. Expressive, idiomatic, musical shaping, and detail. Basically, this is about phrasing, slurring, and all these other articulations that it considers as shaping. And of course, the performance assured, fully committed, vivid communication of character and style. These are the examples of the comments from the ABRSM examination. Great for cello distinction, Rakana vocalist. For long phrases were well crafted here with sensitive use of the tonal palette. Rhythmic nuance directed the music well and the tuning was almost all well controlled. A mature and musical sincere performance. 28 out of 30. And the comment from the ABRSM grade 2 for piano. Notes and rhythms almost all correct, but this dance needed to be felt in two dotted crotchet beats per bar rather than six quavers, which lead to a heavy feel with not enough drive and balance. 20 out of 30. This is how you prepare ABRs and remotely assess performance grading set. To know more information, I'm going to put a link in the description box below. And for the next episode, I'm going to be teaching you all the other things in the normal examination, including sight reading, scales are features, and oral exam. And of course, I'm going to revise to you all the pieces again, but not the way I've done in this video. It's going to be a complete different episode. This one was about remotely assessed grade exam. And so, let's get sweet! If you disagree or if you have any other topics that you want me to talk about, leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next lecture. My name is Joshua Wan Parkin and as always, take care. Bye.